Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the presentation of the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year Award as selected by the Football Writers Association of America. I'm Steve Richardson, Executive Director, and I'd like to begin by thanking the presenting sponsor, the Allstate Sugar Bowl, which has so gracious, graciously accepted the sponsorship of this award. We look forward to many future years with our friends in New Orleans, where Coach Robinson is revered for his legendary career. A special thank you goes to the Sugar Bowl Committee, CEO Paul Houlihan, and COO Jeff Hundley. I would also like to introduce some special guests who are joining us and will be part of the presentation. TCU coach Gary Patterson, Eddie Robinson III on behalf of his grandfather and for whom the award is named, Kirk Bowles, 2014 president of the Football Writers Association, and Sugar Bowl president, Judge Dennis Waldron. We also have in our midst one of the most famous coaches in college football history, Lou Holtz, and he will be making remarks uh, in the middle of the program. The FWA has chosen a coach of the year since the 1970. 57 football season and since 1997 the FWA and Eddie Roberts and his family have partnered in presenting this prestigious award in coaching excellence. During his historic 55 year coaching career Eddie Robinson amassed 408 wins all at Grambling State University making him the winningest division one coach in football history. Coach Rob won more than 70 percent of his games, 17 SWAC titles and nine black football national championships until his retirement following the 1997 season. He passed away in 2007 at the age of 88. Three years later, Eddie Robinson Museum was opened on the Grambling State campus where there is one of these busts. And a copy of this bus is also being, that is being presented to Coach Patterson this evening is also one of only five prestigious awards featured in the new College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta with the actual trophy there on the premises. Eddie Robinson was not only a great coach, he was a developer of young men. He believed in the American dream that everybody had a chance in this country regardless of his or her background. To that end, Coach Rob served as an inspiration, not only to his players, but to those who observed his coaching. Coach Lou Holtz will speak more about that with, with, with examples. As far back as 1966, the FWA named him as the coach who had made the biggest contribution to college football in the past 25 years. From the beginning, the FWA Coach of the Year Award has celebrated the most acclaimed and influential coaches in college football. Among those, Woody Hayes of Ohio State, Darrell Royal of Texas, John McKay of USC, Bob Devaney of Nebraska, Vince Dooley of Georgia, Lou Holtz of Notre Dame and Arkansas, he won the award at both places, Nick Saban of LSU and Alabama, and Urban Meyer while he was at Utah, and there have been many others. Thanks to all of them for their hard work and dedication to the game of college football over the years and to the development of the sport. The finalists for this year's award were nominated by the FWA officers and placed on a ballot for a vote by the entire FWA membership after the conference championship games. The other finalists were Art Bros of Baylor, Jimbo Fisher of Florida State, Justin Fuente of Memphis, Brian Harson of Boise State, Mark Helfer of Oregon, Urban Meyer, Ohio State, and Nick Saban of Alabama. All were coaches of FBS conference title teams during the 2014 season. Now I'm going to introduce Lou Holtz as one of the winners of the FWA award two times and he will make some remarks about the legacy of football and, and Coach Robinson. I think it's wonderful for you to name this after Eddie Robinson. When you want to talk about one of the great people in this world, one of the great coaches, you have to start with Eddie Robinson. I never had the opportunity to coach for Eddie or against Eddie, but I did have the privilege of coaching in the Hula Bowl for one solid week, and my assistant was Eddie Robinson and his beautiful wife. We spent one week together, and it was a memorable week. Now, the Hula Bowl is a little loose, and I'll never forget at the first team meeting, we had Eddie Robinson brought a wide receiver. 
week of the team meeting and Eddie Robinson's wide receiver showed up at the first meeting in coat and tie, which tells you something about what he was taught. Yeah, they talk about all the people in the NFL and he's done, but more importantly, the character, the integrity, and some of the most memorable things that affected me and influenced me as a coach was the time I spent with Eddie Robinson in that week. It's also great for me to be here because your first recipient was Woody Hayes. I also know that in 1968, when I happened to coach for Woody Hayes, we won the national championship, beat Southern Cal and O.J. Simpson. He was one of your recipients. Woody Hayes had a profound influence on me, and I could tell you stories by the hours. And everybody gets upset and frustrated when you coach for and doggone it, when your name's Bo Schembechler, Lou Holtz, Earl Bruce, you get out on your own, you coach just like him. And I think it's really wonderful for the Sugar Bowl to be involved in this so strongly. The Sugar Bowl is a wonderful experience. First time I had the opportunity to go there was at the University of Arkansas. And we were playing, we were playing Alabama and Bear Bryant for the national championship. And they had a party together where both sides were together. It really frustrated me when our players stood in line to get Bear Bryant's autograph. I said, you know, I am your coach, but boy, needless to say, Alabama won, beat us, won the national championship, walked across the field, shook Bear Bryant's hand. I said, congratulations, coach. Your team played a great game. They were flawless. He looked down at me and said, coach, I want you to know that's the best game we played in five years. I said, boy, am I glad I had a chance to see it. I'm really lucky on that. So, but I also think that to be here for this great honor because we're honoring a tremendous man over here in Coach Patterson. You can look at the record, but I went out this afternoon. I'm down here for ESPN, and on television, you just talk to you, think of something to say. And I am down here with a guy named Mark Bain. Everybody said, do you and Mark have difference of opinion? No. I love him like a brother, but we do think differently. He was a player as a coach. He made suggestions. I made decisions. He showered after work. I showered before work. He signed a paycheck on the back. I signed it on the front. You know, they're just a different attitude. I did have the opportunity to go out and look at TCU. And I was at the University of Arkansas. I love to play TCU because we're usually going to win the game. But that is not the same stadium I coached in. That's not the same university. What he has done for his players, but for the university in general, is absolutely fantastic. You want to talk about class. You know, I felt that there were times where we deserved to win the national championship. We didn't get it. And I would whine and complain and try to present reasons why we should. And I can understand why the media rejected that. When I look back on it now, I wish that I had the intelligence, the character and the integrity to handle disappointment the way Gary Patterson handled it this year. Tells you volumes about how lucky the parents are to have their sons and daughters play for it. See, coaching doesn't have to be complicated. You know, you realize there are only five colors of the rainbow? But look what Michelangelo did with those five colors. You know, there are only seven musical notes. But look what Beethoven did with those seven notes. You know, there are only 10 numbers. But look what Bernie Madoff did with those 10 numbers. <laughs> that noise have to be good, but just the thing about coaching, and Gary and I and everybody else in the field of coaching, we're born with a silver spoon in our mouth. I was born in the Depression. My dad had a third grade education. I was born in a cellar. We had one bedroom for my sister, myself, my parents, a kitchen, a half bath. There was no welfare, no food stamps, no safety net. I lived there for seven and a half years. But the reason I say I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth than anybody else that goes in the field of coaching was, because I was born in this country. I was given the opportunity to participate in a sport where I learned more about life, more about teamwork, more about success than I ever did in a college classroom. Football is the greatest game in the world, and I miss it drastically because of the relationship with people. You learn you get knocked down. Life's not always fair. And things aren't always going to be equal. But you have to persevere and you continue to work and you don't make excuses. You make corrections. So I've been blessed to be in this wonderful game. 
Nobody has done it any better over the many, many years than Gary Patterson has. I have great respect for him. Met his lovely wife, Kelsey, today. You can tell he definitely is a great recruiter. I can promise you that. It's easy to see why you win. I leave you this very last thought. You know, a lot of people in this world can be successful and make a lot of money. When you die, that ends. When you're in coaching, you're in teaching, or you happen to own a business, you have a chance to be significant. Significance is where you help other people be successful. And that lasts many a lifetime. Even though Woody Hayes is long gone, I assure you he continues to live because the influence he's had on me and many other players he's coached. So when I see Gary Patterson, I don't look at the ones and losses, and that's impressive. I think about the millions of people he influenced, not just his players, but the students as well. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm privileged and humbled to have won this award twice. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. When given the opportunity to speak, I've given myself two rules. Number one, always be honest. Number two, always be brief. I will strictly enforce both rules tonight. <laughs> With honor and glory to God, always, I bring well wishes on behalf of the Eddie G. Robinson family, and especially from my grandmother back in Grammy, Doris Robinson. As you certainly know, there are first ladies of college football all across the country, but I can say she is probably one of the oldest surviving first ladies at 95 years of age. Coach Lou Holtz, man, I'm a long time admirer, and it, it's always an honor um, to get up and, uh, you know, follow you um, and to be in your presence. I truly think you are a college football treasure. You said you'd be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Gary Patterson of Texas Christian University, I congratulate you and your team for a highly impressive bowl win over Ole Miss, 42-3. Now, I really think the rest of the regions around the country, you know, I think they know what we already knew around here. Um, I have reflections of my grandfather's uh, humbleness and humility when you stated that the head coaches get too much attention, referring that you have a good team, good players, and a really great coaching staff. Now, I've come across uh, quite a few energetic coaches in my time. I think now I've put you in my top three. <laughs> Keep up that good, solid coaching, Coach. <clears throat> I have two very special guests uh, here tonight with me uh, that I want to recognize. My 16-year-old son, Eddie G. Robinson IV, stand up. And my 14-year-old lovely daughter, Chloe Robinson. I've got quite a few things. Um, I want to thank the All-State Show Bowl um, for your tremendous support. Paul Houlihan, Jeff Hundley, Judge Dennis Waldron, and John Sudsbury. Again, thanks. I want to thank all the writers, the Football Writers Association of America, 2014 President Kirk Bowles, the outstanding Steve Tiger Richardson, <laughs> <laughs> and very special thanks to uh, Margaret Mason, Director of Special Events. I also want to thank the National Football Foundation, Steve Hatchell, Matthew Sign, and others for your continued support of this award. Friends and family, thank you for attending as well. In closing, I want to borrow two words that the National Football Foundation uses and also created a website with it. If I may, and simply say, football matters. Thank you. Back to you, Steve. 
this marks the second time this award has been presented to Coach Patterson. He also won it in 2009 uh, when the Horn Frogs were still in the Mountain West Conference, and so he can go from one conference to the other and win championships and, and obviously do well. The winning coach has engineered one of the great turnarounds in college football, going from 4-8 to 2013 to 12-1 this season. The number six Horn Frogs in the CFP standings, which you know probably should have been higher. Uh, at, but that is still a monumental accomplishment because they were picked to finish seventh in the 10-team Big 12 in the preseason. They won the share of the title and defeated Ole Miss by 39 points in the uh, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Uh, not only did Coach Patterson coach TCU to a near-perfect season, he has become only the eighth coach to win this award at least twice, joining Ohio State's Woody Hayes and Penn State's Joe Paterno, who are three-time winners, Nick Saban, Lou Holtz, Daryl Royal, John McKay, and Johnny Majors. Those are the other two-time winners of the 58-year-old FWA Coach of the Year Award. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and pleasure to present the 2014 Coach of the Year winner, Coach Gary Patterson. Well, first off, um, as he said earlier, I, I want to thank your mom, your grandmother, and uh, the Robinson family, um, Judge and the Sugar Bowl, and the Riders. Obviously, you know, it's really hard uh, to be good at what you do and still people like you, because that's the only way they ever vote for you. <laughs> and so, uh, Riders and coaches, I think that's always, a, I think that's kind of like marriage. It's a love-hate relationship, isn't it? <laughs> But uh, I will tell you, I'm very honored uh, by this award. Number one, because uh, the first time I won it, I, I did a lot of background and understanding and knew a lot about Coach Robinson and what he stood for. And the, not only did he have a lot of success, but also he had a lot of success off the field as much as he did on. As far as the legacy he left of his players and the kind of people he turned out uh, and the kind of kids that, that have followed for many years to come. And I, that's one of the reasons why I've stayed at TCU is for the simple same reasons. Uh, to give an opportunity to, um, to be able to do that. When you, when you talk about being somewhere 18 years, uh, that means some of our first players are now 40 years old. Uh, and there's 17-year-olds coming into our university. So uh, there's a broad range of uh, saying, and, and probably the happiest I get is, uh, you know, wins and losses are how you keep your job. But to be honest with you, um, to see them come back, being successful, have families, uh, have their own businesses, tell their stories, and every once in a while to say some of the things that we taught them were one of the reasons why they've been successful. Obviously, I stand here because, uh, number one, I, we had, we've had a great staff, we had great players, and to be honest with you, and I always, uh, she'll always tell you, and she wouldn't tell you, but she kind of gave you that, others would give me that look. Um, you know, we become a lot better when we're very strong at home. And obviously my wife Kelsey is a big part of, of everything that's happened to me over the years. Uh, in my office, I'm, uh, I'm the bad cop. She's the good cop. Uh, there's not any doubt that players like her a whole lot more, understandably. Uh, you know, when we talked, you said we did, that I did a great job recruiting. What I did was I did a great job of outlasting my competition. Uh, you, know, you just got to, kind of like in recruiting, you just got to outweigh the whole situation until everybody else gives up. And so uh, that's, uh, I think she just felt sorry for me and in the whole frame of things. And many of you have dealt with me, and you understand, I think the biggest thing that I've learned uh, with dealing with, with the writers and the media is to understand that, uh, that you, have, you have family too, just like I have coaches that have family. You have a job to do, you have things. and. Uh, I think if, if I could ever teach any young writers or any young coaches, head coaches, was be that uh, have a relationship with people, understanding that all you're wanting is a 50-50 shake. And uh, I think that's what Coach Robinson was all about. He was all about making sure that in, in this lifetime, he wanted, to teach, he wanted to teach valuable lessons about life, he wanted to teach valuable lessons about people and how you treated them. And to understand we weren't always going to agree, but we were going to agree to disagree sometimes. And uh, this award, uh, obviously, I'm very honored to uh, be able to stand here twice. I'm a little bit happier this time uh, in 2009 
I got on a plane and flew to Los Angeles and uh, accepted the award after losing the Fiesta Bowl. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit hard on me because my team went east to Fort Worth and I went west. And I kind of felt badly because uh, I felt like after that loss um, that uh, I should have been with them. But after I got to uh, the hotel and, and was a part of this group and you guys and, and accepted this award, it made it a little bit better understanding that uh, you know, the world goes on and, and, and uh, obviously we were able to come back to that football team a year after that and win a Rose Bowl. So uh, on behalf of my wife, TCU, uh, Commissioner Bowles being the Big 12 Conference, I uh, humbly accept the Eddie Robinson Award and, uh, and I appreciate your vote and, and allowing me to be a part of uh, what a great group of people that's on the back of that program. Uh, great group of coaches. Coach Holtz? If I could ever learn to speak as well as you do, or coach as well as you do, uh, she might like me better. <laughs> and every successful person has a very surprised mother-in-law. <laughs> Thank you. We'll end with that. <laughs>